so basically let me introduce a little bit about this project. What we want to achieve is the critical use of robotics in education to improve the educational experience about and through robotics. To do this, uh, we are doing a, a diverse quantity of workshops around Europe and also based on this experience we will produce a framework that will make evident the connection between 21st century skills, pedagogical methodologies and robotics. So basically we are seven partners and today I'm going to talk about the work done by the Technical University of Vienna. Oh, sorry. And uh, I'm part of the Vision for Robotics group that basically the idea is to devise machines to help robots to see and is led by pro the professor Marcus Vincent. And why robotics in education? That is the first question that always comes and it's like, okay, well, that we can put just robotics there, it's going to work, everything is fun, the kids really like it, but it's not like that. So far we have seen that uh, the impact of robotics is still unknown. So everyone says and talks about robotics, it's nice, they show, of course, the kids like it, but, well, tell me about the real impact. Uh, that is one part. And we need to determine how to use correctly the technology, not just robotics and education, otherwise can be counter, uh, counterproductive in, uh, for all the kids. So they are not going to like it, the teachers are not going to use it anymore because there is not any effect. Uh, so our objective during the second year was to quantify the effect of introducing storytelling in a workshop using robotics. To do this, and why storytelling is like it involves creativity, is one of the forces that is in between the 21st century skills. And creativity is an important factor of competitiveness in modern organizations, and it has to be trained. It's something that you still need to practice to be more creative. It's not that you say like, okay, please, do something creative. No, it doesn't work, in, like, it doesn't work like that. You, it has to be trained. So that's why we decided to introduce these kind of things on our workshops. And the tool that we are using, we didn't create this robot, is available on the market, but we use it because it has several sensors and also three different programming languages that we can use with all the kids that were coming to our workshops. So from the basic one, that is the visual programming, then something that they call blocky programming that looks more like Scratch, and then the textual programming. And uh, the first assumption that we had in our workshops, it was that the participants didn't have any previous experience on programming. So we were going to introduce them on how to use the robot, on how to program, and then we are going to continue with the storytelling. Uh, so the activity was divided in two parts. Then first, a basic programming concept so they can learn how to use the robot, and then we were going to increase their creativity to using the storytelling. Uh, we have a uh, first session with six exercises that are named here, and also we used uh, handouts in each one of our activities where the goal of the exercise was described, the general description, the task description, and then some tips that they can use during the activity just to provide the whole information to them. And the second part was, okay, create a story. Please do it, but we put some restrictions to make, make things uh, more difficult for them. The first one was like, okay, we are going just to create two groups, and between these two groups, each group is divided in other three groups, technical designers and directors. The technicians have to program the robot based on the specifications of the designers and the directors have to coordinate the whole work, have to come with the story, tell, talk with the designers. Here we have uh, some of the work that they have done. Also the restrictions is that they have to include two robots. In some cases they don't, can touch the robot. And the robot has to last at least 40 seconds and no more than one minute. 
to do the evaluation in the whole project, we came with a evaluation protocol that it was very strict, that includes inform, uh, consent forms for the parents, uh, the school, and the kids. The, then we have their reporting templates, observation and reflection of the tutors, handling protocol pre and post questionnaire to capture aptitudes and effect of the workshop. In total were 64 lecture questions, six open questions, and two different types of questionnaires. Uh, the two types of questionnaires were due that we saw that we were having problems with the younger kids between seven to 10 to explain like a very difficult, very high school questions. So we make the tweak there. Also, we have the drama scientists to see what they think about what a science is. Then we have the interview. Also, we have a student's reflections and artifacts of learning. All of this to tend to be analyzed by us. Ah, again, the mistake. So, from the tubing, these are the numbers from the, just the tubing. We have uh, nine different workshops for a total of 182 participants. That is not bad for just one of our partners. Uh, the workshops were held at uh, the university. The assignment of the class, uh, of the programming, was based on our first year experience where we test like, okay, what happened if we provide this programming language to these kids? Uh, we did it and it worked well. Uh, here you can see that it was like we cover kids from six years old till 18 years old. And the stars were four, uh, almost 4.3 in the mean. That was not bad. bad. Um, to do the analysis, we use uh, mixed methods to analyze the data. That means that we were going to use the quantitative and the qualitative, and then we are going to use the multiple sources to have a kind of triangulation in this information, just to have the whole picture. Um, from the quality, quali uh, ba -ba. Qualitative. Yeah, qualitative data, we saw that it was interesting that some of the groups have uh, difficulties. Mainly the older groups have difficulties collaborating. For them, it was difficult to collaborate in big groups. And this is something that we were analyzing also as part of the project, that teamwork is not just to put everything together, everyone together and say, like, please, collaborate. No, you have to teach them. You have to tell them, like, well, to do collaboration is to do this and this and this, and these are the characteristics of a good team or group, because there is a difference. So, well, there is something happening there, something that we have to correct. We didn't see that problem with the young kids. For them, was everything perfect. Then the difficulties was for the young groups and the programming part. Uh, one of the groups, mentioned during the interview that math was helpful during the workshop. That was surprising. So now we can see the connection also of robotics with mathematics and other sciences. Then we have the tutors recognize the difficulty of the participants to understand the flow of a program. So they don't have this sequential thinking part on their heads. And it was difficult for them to explain them like how to follow the path, even though we tried to do it at the beginning with the simple exercise. And it was funny, this is just uh, an anecdote, that during the first year we had a, quite a similar uh, workshop with the same course. And what happened is that during the first year we exposed them with the blocky language and then we said like, well, maybe they have more experience, we are going to use it with the textual programming. When they arrive, they talk with the tutors and say like, no, 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 no. This is not the program that we are used to. We want to change to block because it's the one that we want to use. This is something that, at least in my case, amazed me that they remember and they just want to continue using what they already know. They are not open to new experience. Um, for the rest of the things, I'm just going to present some of the parts is that where they have uh, created a robot before, 
basically we have that in a school just 18 participants that is just few of them um, program before again in a school they are not teaching that much most of the things are done in the club or at home then we have uh, working with robots that have used the knowledge of technology, how things work, and what we have learned using robotics was surprise technology and how things work. Yeah, this for me is also like, okay, something is happening there because we were also introducing this art thing that they have to use kind of creative, artistic inspiration, and they didn't say like, okay, well, art is part of something or that I was using here. Uh, then we have a lot of more information, as I said, we have tons of questions. But the interesting part here is that working with robots was interesting. Most of them were between four and five, so I st I strongly agree and agree. Then working with robots uh, was difficult, something in the middle, but it's good, well, it was not that difficult. And then working with robots was fun. Again, we, we can see that the mean is, the median is in five. So like at least 50% of the participants consider, it, strongly agree with this statement. Uh, yep, then we have a strongly disagree and disagree with, I was bored during the workshop, I worked hard, they were working hard, and I gave up too quickly, no, because they were engaged with the activity. Uh, yes, with the conclusion, it's like uh, regarding with uh, of the programming language or, or previous experience, they really like the uh, activity with robots. Uh, as I said before, they didn't recognize that the storytelling was a part of the artistic things. They were more focused about the technology. Uh, yeah. As a future work, introduce critical thinking on the activity. So here is the crane that we are going to use to create the elevator, just to combine a new solutions. Thanks for your attention. And so thank you very much for the presenter.